After the first Starship launch ended in an explosion, SpaceX founder Elon Musk has remained optimistic and has announced a new timeline for the craft to launch. Musk claims that the first test resulted in a ton of significant data that will improve the Starship's chance of reaching orbit. In today's video, let's take a closer look at this timeline and see when the Starship is expected to launch again. Can SpaceX upgrade the craft in time? SpaceX is actively trying to turn the sci-fi dream of a Martian colony into reality. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlements within reach at long last. When Musk revealed his idea to the world, he laid out a basic plan – a large spacecraft and a huge rocket, both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable. The rocket will launch the spacecraft into Earth's orbit, then come back down to Earth for a vertical, propulsive landing. Over the years, the Starship has undergone several design changes as SpaceX continues to perfect the transport and make it as safe as possible for the settlers that will be undertaking the long journey to Mars. The craft includes various amenities for the crew, such as an exercise bay, sleeping quarters, and a fully stocked kitchen area. The most powerful rocket to ever launch from Earth left a crater at the SpaceX launch site last week, but Elon Musk has provided a new timeline for the craft by stating that the teams could be ready to try another Starship launch in as little as one to two months. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to build out a backup site for human launches on the Space Coast to assuage NASA's fears of potential Starship damage when it starts flying from Kennedy Space Center. Those launches won't come until SpaceX completes testing from SpaceX's Starbase launch site in Boca Chica, Texas, where the first integrated launch of the Starship and its Super Heavy booster took place last Thursday. While it didn't make it to space, the booster's 33 Raptor engines, which can produce more than 17 million pounds of thrust, were able to clear the launch tower. About four minutes after flying only to about 24 miles and tumbling back to Earth, SpaceX sent the self-destruct command, resulting in the rocket exploding over the Gulf of Mexico. The vehicle experienced multiple engines out during the flight test, lost altitude, and began to tumble reads an update on the SpaceX website. The flight termination system was commanded on both the booster and ship. While Musk had tempered expectations for the Starship mission to complete its goal of making it to space and flying two-thirds of the way around the Earth on a suborbital flight path, Team said clearing the launch pad was their number one goal, and part of a testing approach by the company that expects hardware to fail through more frequent test launches. While the failing engines and lack of a planned stage separation are two big problems for the next launch attempt, repairing the major damage from the launch site will be needed first. All that's left of the concrete lateral support beam is the rebar. Hopefully this didn't gronk the launch mount, Musk posted on Twitter images comparing the launch site's construction to post-launch damage. Musk said the company had prepared for a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount, but that it was not ready in time for the test launch. He said, We wrongly thought the launch pad concrete would survive the launch based on data from a static fire performed in February that saw 31 of the 33 engines manage a successful test burb. Still early in the analysis, but the force of the engines when they throttled up may have shattered the concrete rather than simply eroding it, he wrote on Twitter. The engines were only at half thrust for the static fire test. Video from around the launch site showed chunks of concrete flying all over the place, including several pieces into the surf just over a quarter mile away. Images of the rocket lifting into the sky showed only 27 of the 33 engines lit up a minute into the flight, and more failed before the mission concluded. It's unclear if any were damaged by debris on liftoff. With a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and we learned a tremendous amount about the vehicle and ground systems today that will help us improve on future flights of Starship, the company posted on its site. Starship's power is nearly twice that of NASA's Space Launch System, which still holds the record at 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust for a rocket that made it to space during its launch from Kennedy Space Center last November on the Artemis One moon mission. The damage SLS did to the mobile launcher at Kennedy Space Center's Launch Pad 39B has led to what continues to be months of repair work as teams get it ready for Artemis II in 2024. The sheer power of Starship for what's planned to be future launches from KSC at SpaceX's Launch Pad 39A raised NASA concerns last year with the uncertainty of what sort of damage it might do to the pad. SpaceX is continuing to build out a Starship launch tower at 39A for when the spacecraft is ready for operational flights. 
The problem, though, without Boeing Starliner as a backup yet, NASA relies on SpaceX with its Crew Dragon spacecraft as its sole U.S. space transport of astronauts to the International Space Station. Those launches for now can only take place from 39A, and the potential threat of Starship launch pad damage has driven SpaceX to work on upgrading its nearby launch site at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's Space Launch Complex 40 so it could fly the Dragon spacecraft as well. SpaceX and the NASA team have done an incredible job laying out the crew and cargo capability from Pad 40, said NASA's Commercial Crew Program Manager Steve Stick in February. SpaceX has started groundbreaking on that pad and in the initial work to clear the site and then pour the pilings for the crew tower. SpaceX's Dragon Mission Management Director Sarah Walker said she expects the site to be ready this fall for initial launches with just cargo. We think it enables even greater flexibility for our Dragon customers, she said. Our primary focus first will be to allow cargo missions to launch and just allow them to be interchangeable between the two pads, 39 and 40. And then we'll add the final certification elements for human spaceflight capabilities soon after, but we're seeing good progress. SpaceX continues to look for more ways to make the Starship even more powerful in the future. Recently, the company announced it may have discovered a new method of rocket propulsion. SpaceX says it has created a thruster system that defies physics and has successfully tested it. The rocket propulsion system uses electrically charged gas and can achieve speeds up to 65 kilometers per second or about 135,000 miles per hour. The engine is made from super lightweight carbon fiber fuel tanks with cold gas thrusters. It doesn't use any type of propellant, meaning it does not expel any byproducts into space. Instead, the engine produces thrust by accelerating superheated plasma with magnetic fields, which also means no fumes are being expelled from combustion. These types of engines are known as electric thrusters, but they work very differently from those used in SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets. These thrusters create thrust by propelling pressurized gas, whereas electric ones produce a charged plasma that emits ions to push a craft forward. The electric engine developed by SpaceX is reportedly more powerful than conventional gridded ion thrusters and could power manned missions to Mars and beyond. It could also cut down on travel time for spacebound cargo because it requires less propellant, which can be expensive to launch into orbit. The technology is still being tested and further development is needed before it will be ready for space flight. It has been submitted for peer review and NASA experts think it has potential, at least on paper. Some say it's impossible to travel at high speeds through space, but that hasn't stopped Elon Musk from claiming he can do it. His idea is to create a light speed engine that will take us to Mars in just 70 days. Such an engine defies physics and would mean traveling faster than 186,000 miles per second. There are a few ways that we could travel at light speed, but first we need to understand how light works. As it travels through space, every atom in its path interacts with it. This slows it down and even stops it completely if there's no matter around to pass through. Because of these interactions, light has a maximum velocity of 186,000 miles per second, meaning that's as fast as it can go through space. Since nothing can travel faster than light without breaking the laws of physics, if we want to catch up with a distant star in our lifetime, we have to find another way to get there besides traveling directly toward it. Elon Musk has long stressed that he founded SpaceX back in 2002 primarily to help humanity colonize Mars. The billionaire entrepreneur believes that Starship is the vehicle that will finally allow us to do that. SpaceX has been working on the deep space transportation system for a while now. Musk unveiled the basic architecture back in 2016, calling it the Interplanetary Transport System. A year later, the name had changed to BFR, short for Big Falcon Rocket. BFR then morphed into Starship, the name it has held for a few years now. Starship consists of a giant first-stage booster called Super Heavy and an upper stage known, somewhat confusingly, as Starship. Both of these vehicles are designed to be fully reusable, which is the key breakthrough that Musk thinks will finally bring the Red Planet within reach. The two elements of the Starship that launched on the 20th, the Booster 7 Super Heavy prototype and the Ship 24 upper stage, were not going to fly again. SpaceX wasn't planning to recover them from the sea. SpaceX's new Raptor engine is powered by liquid methane and liquid oxygen, a combo also chosen with Mars in mind. Both can be produced on the Red Planet, allowing Starship to launch efficiently from Mars as well as Earth. Musk envisions fleets of starships flying multiple times per day here on Earth. They are super heavy boosters coming directly back to the launch mount after each liftoff or rapid inspection, refueling, and relaunch. Such extensive reuse could theoretically bring the cost of each starship mission down to just a few million dollars, Musk has said. 
That price point would be truly revolutionary. Considering Starship's power, it will be capable of lifting 165 tons to Earth orbit on each mission in its reusable configuration. To put the vehicles brawn into perspective, Super Heavy's 33 Raptors generate about 16.5 million tons of thrust at liftoff. That's nearly twice as much as the previous record holder, NASA's Space Launch System Mega Rocket, which flew for the first time last November on the Artemis 1 moon mission. SpaceX has already sold two private around-the-moon Starship missions as well. One was booked by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Misawa, who will fly with a crew of eight artists and influencers. Dennis Tito, who paid his own way to the International Space Station back in 2001, will fly on the other Starship moon mission along with his wife Akiko and other passengers whose identities have not yet been disclosed. Target launch dates for those two private moon missions have not yet been announced. But they and all of Starship's other Envision future flights are a little closer to reality now that the huge vehicle has actually gotten off the ground. The Starship has the ability to carry up to 100 passengers to the Moon, Mars, and beyond, giving people the opportunity to experience space travel in a whole new way. With its comfortable cabin and advanced life support systems, the Starship is the perfect vehicle for space tourism. And with its powerful engines and efficient fuel system, it can carry out long-duration missions with minimal interruption. Space tourism is a relatively new concept and has only become possible in recent years due to advancements in technology. In the past, only astronauts and professional space travelers had the opportunity to experience the thrill of space travel. But now, with companies like SpaceX offering private missions to space, the dream of space travel is becoming a reality for more and more people. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about the new Raptor engine's big problem. Do you think SpaceX can stick to this new timeline? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.